Hey guys, how you doing? So this is LaQueen. Is I'm very, very happy to be here today. Uh, I am here in Boston. Um, outside, I'm just trying to get my girl back. So I am doing a lot of work in the community. I'm very happy to be here. I, again, my name is LaQueen Bible. I'm a certified medical assistant. I am um, just going through a lot of things right now. And I just pray for you guys. I'm going through a lot of pressure, a physical pressure as well as spiritual pressure right now. Uh, Boston, the city of Boston is not doing good at all financially. There are buildings have that um, the state of Massachusetts, small businesses are due to open on June the 1st, June the 1st, which is next Monday in one week. But a lot of the revenue that these um, the city is getting, they're not going to be able to get from the small businesses because there's no real guarantee that the government will reopen back up again. They're talking about right now about postponing things, postponing things. And I'm still continuing to do, um, I might go ahead and schedule another webinar just to keep you guys informed, just to keep updated what's going on in, on in the community, as well as doing my research about being involved right now with what's going on with COVID. So um, I, first of all, I just want to go ahead and, and introduce myself because people are like, I don't know you, you I know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're doing um, and a lot of other things right quickly. So as long as the volume is up, can you hear me? The volume is up. Great, great. Okay. So I'm going to briefly introduce myself. I'm like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I'm pretty much talking about getting involved in the community as well as a lot, a lot of buildings, government buildings, small business offices, banks, a lot of them are not occupied. So it may be a pretty day outside, it may be beautiful outside, but a lot of these businesses are not occupied. So the lights are on in the buildings, but they're not occupied. So I'm looking at every single building downtown here in Boston, on State Street, on Pearl Street, on uh, Lincoln Street, on um, Washington Avenue, all down Main Street in Boston, here in downtown Boston, and the, the weather is beautiful, everything is beautiful and wonderful, but again, at the same time, though, the lights are on in the buildings, but they're not occupied. Those There's no businesses open, there's no people in the offices, there's nobody working in the facilities, so there are plenty of desks, plenty of oper operable offices, office spaces. There's over... I'm guessing right now there's over 50,000 available offices in the city of Boston right now. Seriously, seriously, I can, I can, I can, I can promise you that there is over right now. I'm not even going to say 50,000. I probably would say about five to 10,000 available office space, more or less, in the city of Boston for international companies, for small businesses, for uh, investors, Chinese investors, Arab investors people from all around the world, European investors to come into the city of Boston, as well as New York's too, as well, and come in here and invest back in the city. Now, mind you, um, let me introduce myself. My name is LaQueen Bible. I'm a medical assistant. I'm a certified medical assistant. I'm doing, currently been doing research on COVID for the past three months uh, since the year was over. I relocated here from Albany, New York. I'm currently registered in Albany and I live in Boston. So Boston has been a really great opportunity for me. I'm currently looking for a, a personal assistant and office aide to help me with my research, continue my research, as well as to help me with my webinars, help me with my online media presence and just be there here in the field. Now, listen, Every, there is plenty of available office space. There's plenty of opportunity, business opportunities here in the city, but the business, but the city of Boston is state to open back up on June the 1st, okay? COVID right now has not only closed down businesses, has not only affected people's personal health, but at the same time, it has changed, changed a lot of policy. It has changed the flow of business, the flow of business. And I'm working part-time for Two Guys Campaigns in Albany. Albany is the capital of New York. Boston is the capital of Massachusetts. I came here to Boston for opportunities, for job opportunities, for job growth, and, ev and eventually I've been pretty much fired on every single job that I've had in the last year, two years. So I'm doing everything on my own. I'm doing my own home business. I'm getting out here. I'm reaching out to people. Today I started doing sales calls. So I started doing a little bit of marketing, do a little bit of 
I need to get my business cards done and all that stuff. But right now, I'm planning a lot of things. I'm, I'm happy to be here involved in a city like Boston, where there is plenty of opportunity available here in this city. But at the same time, I'm working here doing the phone banking canvassing for Sam Fine and Matt Taparowski's campaign. Uh, Matt is going for DA in Albany of the 108th district and Sam is going for assembly in, um, on Capitol Hill. And I'm facing a lot of pressure to, to date, to, to be out, on the street, you know, well, my focus should be involved in the community, making money, making business, making sales, instead of being a dependent of somebody else, being under somebody else. Right now, the economy is changing big, 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 big American cities, New York City, as well as Boston, Massachusetts. It's really, really sad. What I'm saying is there is plenty of office space available here in the city. Literally, literally. Hi, Alan, how you doing? Literally, literally, there is over at least five to 10,000 office spaces available here in the city of Boston. Even more than 10,000 office spaces. I'm serious, like quality, high quality, affordable, office space. I have this office space as Regis as well as there's plenty of buildings that are right now great and great, great top condition, but they are not occupied. So the lights are in the building. There's plenty of desk office space, but a lot, a lot of businesses have moved out and relocated or have sold, sold to the city or have, um, um, you know, um, quit have had to foreclose on their on their loans with the bank because they weren't able to make up the sales to get that sell revenue that they needed from the from the banks or from the customer service the customers that they were getting in okay now i'm i have feel i feel pressure every single day i feel pressure to work this this phone canvassing job i feel pressure to be out on the streets i feel pressure to hire uh hire people to help me out um there's plenty of organizations out there that have other community involvement input. There's the Democrats, Democrats, young Democrats of Massachusetts. There's this, the state houses here in Boston. There's the Boston Police Department. There's the mayor, uh, Mayor Marty Wash and his staff. There's plenty of assistance out here, but as a single black Latino woman, being by myself and doing everything myself, I am always criticized as well as put down for my opinion and how I should help other people. I should be doing something else when I really wanna be involved in the community. I have a lot of things to go through. I have a lot of things to do, but I have very limited time and very limited resources at the same time. So I really, really, really wanna be involved in the community. And I really, really, really want to help people out and be there for people offer my services, as well as continue in the medical field and doing what I want to do. It's hard. It is really, really, really hard. But somehow, some way, I know that I'm here for a reason. Back and forth, back and forth. Albany, Boston. Albany, Boston. But you do what you have to do in order to make it and to survive. That's how it is. I always feel extreme pressure. You know, my emotions and everything is a lot of stress to build up in me, but I've made it this far. I made it this far for a reason. And I'm very, very, very happy to be here in Boston as well as have the opportunities open for me in Albany as well. People are actually calling me back, actually giving me another opportunity and giving me another chance. And yes, I do have the day. Yes, everything I'm doing is being recorded, but you know, that's just pretty much normal. Life is normal. Hi, Alan, how you doing? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Good. Okay, so I'm planning on going to nursing school. There are plenty of opportunities here in the city of Boston. It's so sad to see office lease spacing signs on every street block, on every corner in the city of Boston. Literally, there are four lease signs and four cell signs on every street block here in downtown Boston. It is really sad and the streets are bare. The streets are bare. They're bare and empty. You can literally, like I've been doing for the past two, three, two, three, two, three days, walk down the middle of the street in broad daylight and there will be no traffic coming. There will be no traffic coming at all. All the students are out of the city because there's no school. Um, there's no businesses, business opportunities available because there's no customers. There's maybe like one or two convenience stores open, even about three or four or five 7-Elevens 
have to have closed down and board up and left the city of Boston. And you know, 7-Elevens are a very highly profitable business. 7-Eleven convenience store, very highly profitable, profitable businesses and main street locations. A lot of these 7-Elevens are having to pay rent, rent leases for $5,000 a month just to keep up their business space in with the with the real estate in the city of Boston. Now, being a medical phonal, being a medical assistant, a phlebotomist, whatever whatever it is that I do continue to do, continue to research, continue to be involved in, there's opportunities to help out people, to help lower the rates of transmission, to be involved, to be trained, to go back to school, um, to to be first aid, to offer Offer, do you need a screener in your in your in your business? Do you need a screener in your hotel? Do you need a COVID screener in your uh, city? Do you need a COVID screeners? Can I get, can I hook you up with some COVID screeners? Um, I mean, it's it's really sad because there's not really a plan set a small business plan set up in place for the mayor's office. The mayor is offering right now small businesses. Uh, he created a a. Um, a plan for six million dollars, a six million dollar grant for small businesses in Boston. I mean, six million dollars is is small compared to how many businesses are still left in this city, as well as how many of them have had to claim insurance claims for lost profit due to COVID nineteen. And and um, uh, Mayor Bellasio was talking about this during his press briefing today. Governor Cuomo was talking about this during his press briefing today. Charlie Baker, Governor Charlie Baker was talking about this during his press briefing today on Monday that uh, this has happened before. It's nothing new. During 9-11, during the storm, Sandy storm, when it came in New York City, a lot of businesses went through the same thing. They had to foreclose, they had to run down, close up, board up, whatever. And it's really, really sad to see so many boarded up, boarded uh, businesses here in the city of Boston, in downtown Boston. It is so, so, so sad to see so many boarded up businesses. Okay. Okay. It is very sad to see boarded up businesses. Okay. So what do we do? What do we need to do? What's the plan, Mayor? Mayor Wash, Mayor Marty Wash, what is the plan, Governor Baker? What is the plan, Governor Cuomo and Mayor Bellasio? How do we get our big cities back up again and flowing and bring in commerce and bring in investors and bring in medical professionals to help lower the rates of transmission as well as bring up business and revenue into the cities back again? I'm a city girl. I, I'm a country girl and I'm a city girl. So if there's any kind of input that I can be involved in government, I will try to do my very best to be involved in government. I will try to be involved in the community. I was supposed to volunteer for Ayanna Presley's um, um, virtual bank this Sunday, but I had a lot of stuff going on. So any, any opportunity I can be involved in the government, I will try to do my very best and be involved. Okay, I will try to do my very best and be involved. Now, what I do right now is I'm training myself in the medical field. I'm training myself first aid. I'm taking a class in American Red Cross. I'm, I'm hiring people to help me figure out my online media presence, as well as being involved in the community, putting out applications, volunteering, um, being an, an, an aid to businesses in the community, figuring out how can I be assistance. How can my resources be met? How can my services be needed? Now, a lot of people have different opinions of me, but your opinion doesn't matter. What matters is that I'm still here and sad. I'm walking, I'm breathing, I'm living. My mind may be in one place, but my body, my physical body, and my skill sets are in right here. My skill sets are right here in the city of Boston, in Albany, in the United States, in Europe. Wherever my skill sets are needed, my skill sets are right here. And if I can help contribute to the economy, of the city of Boston, of New York, of the United States, of the world, that I would like to be a part of that and I would like to be involved. But right now in the city of Boston, Massachusetts, in the capital of, Ma of Massachusetts, it is really, 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 really depressing to see for sale signs, for sale signs on every single street corner block for lease for sale signs on every street corner block and people think oh the weather's nice 
oh, the weather's good. Oh, everything's okay because the weather's good. No, it's not. The city of Boston, the city of New York, the United States has lost a lot, a lot of economic profit, of economic assistance. It may look pretty because the windows are, are, are nice and washed outside and, and you know the windows are clean and the outside and everything's getting renovated, but inside it is completely bare. These buildings are empty. They look pretty on the outside, but these buildings are empty. There are empty desks, just like the foreclosure of Enron. When Enron, the Enron crash of the early 1990s, the late 1990s, these buildings are empty. Literally, there are empty desks. The lights are on, but nobody's in the desk. It is really that impressive. And there might, and there literally is, excuse me, in reality, there literally is over five to 10,000 available office spaces for lease here in the city of Boston. What I'm doing right now, there is literally available office spaces for lease for young people like myself, minorities, as well as other people, international businesses. Google can come down here. Facebook can have an office down here in Boston like they originated at, do you know what I'm saying? They should come back here into the community where they were founded and bring back their resources and pour back here into the community. So Mac Zuckerberg, um, Steve Jobs and family, uh, Larry Page of Dale, they should come back from Seattle and come back to Boston where they were founded and help bring back the community that they, that they left behind. Do you see what I'm saying? So probably Facebook is already here, but they need to come down here in downtown Boston to revamp and bring back in revenue. Okay, because the city needs revenue right now. The tourist tour season is not doing it. COVID-19 has, has dried up every single kind of economic resource. Any single kind of financial input in the city is ridiculous. The city doesn't have money. The city does not have employees. They, ha they have the city hall gated, gates all up around city hall. <laughs> it is ridiculous. It was ridiculous. So please continue to pray for the city of Boston as well, okay? And Mayor Marty Wash and Governor Baker. Boston is a capital of Massachusetts. Boston is the capital of a lot of history in the United States. If something goes wrong in this big, not just because it's a liberal city, but because it's a major big industry city, industry for food, industry for business, industry for economic growth, industry for technology, um, Apple was founded here. Facebook was founded here. Uh, Apple and Facebook were both founded here. And they left and went, went to California in Seattle, Washington. Do you know what I'm saying? So they need to come right back here and bring back those same profits to increase potential. They need Airbnb to come back here. They need the headquarters to come back here to see them. I'm sure they already have offices in the city, but they need more input into this city. Right now, it's suffering. It is suffering. The streets are empty and bare. The offices, the, the, the buildings are empty and bare. So there needs to be more input and more community involvement to help grow our city, our nation once again. America was already great. We just need to come back and do what we're supposed to do, which is help bring back our communities again. America was already great. We don't really, we don't really need to make something out of nothing. It was America was already great, okay? We just can't, we just need not to forget what made us great, which is we come together as a community, as a country, and help fight against any kind of hate or any kind of prejudice that left us in the place where we are today, as well as any kind of sickness or fears that put us in a place of hate and bigotry that we are already today already have today. There is so much bigotry in the streets. It is ridiculous. People are blaming other cultures. We have our current administration in office is blaming other countries, China and Brazil, for the lack that United States economy is not doing, doing too good right now. Wall Street is horrible right now. And so how can our president detain people coming from Brazil and detain people coming from China just because our economy is not doing good right now? It is ridiculous. It is ridiculous how our president is detaining people, okay, from other countries when they're trying to come here and here and invest 
and bring back investors. Brazil has oil, Brazil has exports, Brazil has beautiful women, Brazil has everything. As well as China, we need China. We cannot bar trade from China. It is ridiculous, we cannot do that, okay? We have to find a resolution to why the COVID flu pneumonia came to the United States. We need to deal with that, fix that, but at the same time, we still need trade, international trade with a country as big as 3 billion people. We cannot lose investment from a country as big as China. We cannot lose that investment. We cannot lose that trade. We cannot lose those resources, okay? We cannot lose those resources. The plastic, the food, the, 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 not only the plastic, but everything else that China has, cotton, uh, plastic, hair, uh, resources, the beauty industry. Every, China has so much investment in, in, in the United, United States economy. It is ridiculous. We can declare war on China and they can come in here and take over the United States within 24 hours. It is ridiculous take over and have a coup d'etat over the president and make the emperor of China the president of the United States. It is ridiculous. They can literally come in here and do that and not have and not have to ask permission. But the way the world goes, the world goes by law and order. So you have to start establish presidents who has authority over 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 whose country. Okay? So even though the United States is in a huge deficit right now with COVID, as well as a deficit with the economy, as well as a deficit with the mortgage crisis, people are not paying their rent. They're not paying their rent and they're not paying their, bi their business mortgages and their business leases, okay, because of, of COVID. They're not paying their business leases. So they're reaching out to insurance companies and insurance companies have to get money from the government. And what happens when the, the, the government declares bankruptcy? Then we have to get the money from another country. Or we have to get the money from our reserves. And right now, the United States doesn't have a lot of reserves left. Okay? So we cannot lose trade with an international company. We need investors. We need Chinese investors. We need Spanish, uh, European investors. We need South American, Mexican investors. We need investors to come back here into the city and pour back money into our economy. We need investors. If you try to break the relationship with trade and with embark trade, a, a major trade relationship with a major, major foreign and economic power like China of 3 billion people, you risk not only a war, but you risk the life and death of your people. Okay, it's more than just a war. It is more than just a war. It is more than just a war. It is e economic power and our economic future. Okay, for yes, President Trump probably does want a war. He probably does want a war and he probably will have a war but we still cannot lose that investment with the major, major house like China, like the Republic of China. We cannot, cannot, cannot lose that economic opportunity. So Democrats, Republicans, and independents, wherever you're coming from, whoever you are voting for, please, please, please stop the bigotry. Stop the bigotry, stop the hate against foreign nationals who are coming into our country, trying to put back economic, economic involvement into our communities. We need our businesses to re reopen back up again. If there are beauty supply stores, if there are grocery store chains, we need them. If there are clothing store changes, chains, restaurants, whatever it is, we need them to come back into our community and pour back their resources into our community, whatever kind of businesses it is. Okay, it is more than just guns. It is more than just the second, third, and fifth amendment. It's more than that. It's more than just about protecting our country. We need investors to come back in here and pour back their economic potential into our country. We need them. America cannot be America by itself. No man is an island by itself. We can't do that. We can't isolate ourselves from other countries. Our population is in decline. 
Right now, there is a global epidemic of a respiratory virus that is, has killed over 300, 400,000 people all around the world. A virus that has killed over 400,000 people around the world and, has, and that has infected over 1 million, 2 million positive cases. So I've had two personal assistants and so far I've told them that I've been tested for and recovered out of COVID. And, and you know, the next day they, they won't come back. So I have to hire another, another personal assistant to help me, to help me deal with this and help me process. I don't know nothing about Boston. I don't know how, to, I don't know nothing about the neighborhood. I need you to help me out. I need you to help me with my social media. I need you to help me get trained in first aid. I need you guys to help me out. So it's hard. It's really, really hard. I don't care if you're black, white, whatever you can, but please don't just be ghetto and come in here and, and tear up everything that I have built up to make. Do you know what I'm saying? You want to hire us. You want to pick us. Well, I put the application on here. Why haven't you responded back? I put out the application online. I put out the ads, advertisements online. Why haven't you responded? Oh, you don't like your community. Oh, you don't like black people. Oh, you, you don't like black men. How come, how come you haven't answered my ad, advertisement? How come you haven't called me? How come you haven't set up an interview? If you want to be a part, a part of a solution, don't be the problem. Be the solution. Yes, I know there is problems with police brutality everywhere. Yes, police brutality is an issue, but instead of protesting against police brutality, why don't you run for office and become a sheriff of your community and see how hard it is to become a police officer yourself? Yes, you can protest. Okay, police brutality. This policeman killed our brother. Okay, we understand. We're sorry that that one man was involved in that one interaction with your family member and your family member got killed because of that one man. But don't let one person and one man reflect upon the whole police force. Don't just isolate one man and one, and one situation against the whole entire police department, the whole entire police security community, just because of one situation and one interaction between one individual and another individual. And yes, we should prosecute them. I completely understand. We should prosecute the police officer, but please don't, don't forget that police officers are here to protect us, okay? If you feel so bad about the situation, why don't you set up your own personal private security, security, okay, security office, security company in your community, okay? And said, we don't want the police here, police, police uh, officers in our community. So we will set up our own police force. You hire your own, you hire your own security company, okay? You hire your own law and law enforcers, okay? And you have them work to eight, 10, 12, 14 hours, 24 hours a day, walking down the streets of your community and you pay them 24 hours a day, okay? that would happen to us. Please do not put shame upon the whole police community, okay? You do their job and you see how hard it is to work that job, okay? I'm not defending the police officer. I'm not defending the act, okay? But that is a tough job. And police officers, fire department, mayors, governors, People in authority have to make decisions every single day. They have to make life and death situations every single day, okay? Put yourself in your shoes. Why don't you go to your local community, your local police force, and why don't you volunteer for your community? Why don't you volunteer for your police department? Why don't you volunteer for your fire department and see how much stress you get? and see if that stress does not overtake you, okay? I'm not defending the action. I'm not defending, I'm not, a, I'm not defending the act, okay? But everybody, every single person, everybody has somebody in their family that either is a security officer or a cop or works in the fire department. Most of every single American has somebody in their family that is a cop or that is involved in the local community, okay? Everybody does. Most of every single, most Americans do. 
okay? That security officer, that cop works a minimum of 10 to 12 to 14 hours a day, walking around his designated zone and monitoring the security cameras, monitoring progress, monitoring his, his, his vicinity. He's armed and loaded, any, and they work early hours and they work late hours. And most of the time, security officers are by themselves, okay? A lot of people are taking it into extreme. They are saying, we are the same as the military. We have the same authority as the military. We can do whatever we want to do because we are protecting and defending the United States from all foreign, all foreign enemies. We don't have any kind of military experience at all, but we are just the same, if not better than the military. And that is what's going on right now with MEGA. A lot of people are taking the law into their own hands and it is dangerous and very dangerous and very, very stupid, okay? You do not have more power and more authority than the United States military. Just because you have your leader in office doesn't mean make you better than the United States Armed Forces. Okay, and a lot of these people, okay, involved in these parties and these groups are wearing military uniforms and pulling it off and saying, I'm a part of the military, I can wear the military uniform, even though they have not raised their hand ever and said, I will protect and defend the United States Constitution against all foreign enemies, domestic and international. Yes, I did that. I did that in 2003. Even though I didn't go to boot camp, I still raised my right hand. And that makes me a prior service member in the United States Army. Even though my, my discharge may not, may not reflect that. And a lot of people say, this is our leader and this is our, our president and we can do whatever we want to do. And we can take the law into our own hands and we can shoot and we can and we can shoot whoever we want to if they have a, 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 a conflict of interest against us and, and they are against and we, if we have to protect and defend ourselves, we will shoot whoever we want to shoot, whether they're white or black or Jewish or Chinese, we will shoot whoever we want to shoot and make sure that the media does not know about it. And yes, there have been many, many, many uh, mods that have not been reported to the media. That have not been reported to the media and it is because the families have faced pressure from community leaders to come to the public and to come to the media to let the light be shown and let people know what is really going on it is it has been because of community involvement community leaders not just church leaders but people in their own blocks on their own street on their own community that see them every day that ask them what happened to your son what happened to your daughter talk about it share about it tell somebody about it don't keep it to yourself don't let these people get away with it go to the pastor go to the tv station talk about it don't just keep it to yourself. Don't just wipe it away. Don't be afraid that those people come after you. Okay, what if they come after you? At least somebody knows about it. Move, do this, do that. Don't let people get away with what they're getting away with. Talk about it. Tell somebody about it. That's what Oprah says. That's what really got me. She's like, be sure to tell somebody about it. Don't keep it to yourself. Tell somebody. Yes, yes, Ahmad. Ahmad was killed violently by two white um, authoritative males. And it wasn't because one was white and one was, and he was black. I, that is a big issue, but that's not really the issue. The issue is that people are taking the law into their own hands and the government, our current administration is backing them up and saying they did it because they wanted to protect our country. And that is a policy of our country, make America great again. And they can get away with it and have people to support them, money, financial interests to support them and back them up and pay off the cops, pay off the judges, pay off the lawyers because they have financial interests involved in it. And get away with it, get away with the murder and get away with the crime. Completely walk away with somebody's murder. 
but it's up to the community, not just the black community, okay? The black community is good. I do I do understand what the Breakfast Club was talking about. He was taking, he was uh, Joe Biden was saying, uh, if you vote, if you vote for Trump, you're not black. And the guy, and then the media personnel, Charlamagne was like, I don't understand what the big deal is about. Well, you better understand what the what the big deal is about. And yes, Joe Biden was a little bit out of his zone. Okay. But right now our economy is suffering. The streets are empty. Businesses are closed down. People are taking the law into their own hands and making it look like it's white and black, like a, another civil war, when in reality it is not. And yes, KKK still exists in the United States. I'm not saying that the KKK can get away with this. What I'm saying is that these people are coming together into groups and parties and organizers say, we can do whatever we wanna do. We can take the law into our own hands and they are both white and they are both black. And they come together and you'd be surprised how many other black cops have killed other black young men and got away with it. And it has not been reported to the media because that was a black cop and that was a black kid. And so it's not a hate crime because that cop was black. Are you kidding me? That cop, that that black man killed my son. Yeah, but it's not going to be reported to the media because he was a black cop. Or he was a Latino cop. Or he was a Mexican cop. It's not a big deal. That boy was out of control. But that black cop killed my black kid. Yeah, it's not a big deal. So when a white cop kills a black kid, it's a big deal. But when a black cop kills a black kid, it's not a big deal. You'd be surprised how much cover up is in the community. Now, I'm not saying what happened to Ahmad was, was not wrong. It was wrong. But there are a lot of people, there are a lot of political groups out there that, like I said before, are taking the law into their own hands. And it is up to the community to let families know, not only Ahmad's, but let families know because Ahmad's was recorded on camera. A lot of these hate crimes are not recorded on camera. Are not recorded on camera. Are you saying these two white men had a camera on their truck? They predicted, predictively came to the black man, okay, young black man with a camera on their truck and predictively did not intend to but killed him anyway with a camera on their truck. I already know that was a setup. The community needs to be involved. And when things like this happen, it is up to people in the communities, to us, to teachers, to lawyers, to doctors, to nurses, to friends of the family, to come together and put pressure on the family. You need to put pressure on these families, on these individuals, not just white families, Mexican families, Chinese families, Arabic families, who Muslim, Muslim families to come together and say, we're tired of our daughters prostituting for rent money. Thank you, thank you, Minister Farrakhan. We're tired of our community being hit on. We're tired of the color community being put down by our own people. And these groups are coming together and having the black church to back them up. How is the black church backing up hate crimes? How is the black church backing up the Fifth Amendment and saying, you have a gun, you have the right to protect and defend yourself? The black church. You'd be surprised how many black churches have financial interest in these, in these groups, these political activist groups. They have financial interest. Yes, what happened to Ahmad was a hate crime. It was a hate crime, but he was not the only one and he will not be the only one. And the fact that the crime was recorded on camera and the fact that it has been reported to, to the media is what happens to a lot of not only black families, but minority families all around the United States. And the families are afraid to come and report because they're scared for their lives. 
So thank you to the family of Ahmad that came and reported it. Thank you to the people that put the pressure on them to report it to the media, to report the mother that lost her son. Thank you to the sisters. Thank you to the aunts. Thank you to the ministers that have that mother come together with all her, with all their prayers, with all the pain that she endured, with all that pressure put on her by the community, and stood there in front of the camera on live TV with tears on her face and reported it to the media. So thank you to the lawyers. Thank you to the ministers. Thank you to the community that she lives in her to help her process and get through this because she is not the only one. At the same time, though. We have a loss in the black community, but we have a loss in our country. Our country is suffering. We need the black dollar. We can't lose the black dollar. The black dollar is very important to the United States economy. We need more black nurses. We need more black doctors. We still need the black dollar. And because we need that black dollar, okay, in our economy, that means that we have a voice. We have an opinion. I know I'm speaking to you white people right now. <laughs> the black people have interest in what goes on in government. And you can't stand by and sit by and let your leaders and our president make, make choices for you when you pay their bills, you pay their checks. You pay the president's salary. So you let the man do, do what he wants to do and you pay and your taxes pay his bills. Yeah, he's a billionaire, of course, but still your taxes pay his bills. He works for you. You don't work for him. He works for you. You're a citizen. He is under your authority. You have the power. The Black people, the Black community has a lot, a lot of power that they don't know about and they're hardly they use. But when it comes to police brutality, then Black people have an input. But you cannot take away that Black dollar. The United States economy needs the Black dollar. We need business owners. We need that Black dollar. We cannot, cannot, cannot lose that Black dollar. And because we have so much input in the black dollar, that means we can go out there and have our own black businesses that make up the, of the United States economy. We can become business owners, whether you're young or old, or you're fresh out of high school, or you're fresh out of college. You can become a business owner. It is easy. It is easy and still make money and still pay the bills and still take care of your family. You can work for a company and you can still be your own business owner at the same time and not lose faith in yourself as well as continuing to get that W-2, get that 401k, get that check on the side and still work for yourself. So you get two checks at the end of the year. And you get more taxes off. So we cannot, cannot lose that black dollar. So the mother, her, her son died. And what does she do? She stays at home and she complains and she cries. And she lives in a depression or her life or what she can do. She, she can come together with her community and go to the capital of her state and help pass laws that prevent police brutality from happening again and help pass laws that can help build community services in her community, help build Boys and Girls Club, help build uh, a more, more police stations so she will have an interest in who is hired as a police officer in her community. She can actually be, become, be on the police board in her community. Are you serious? You guys killed my son? Yes, they, yes, yes, a cop killed your son. But at the same time, you have a voice. The city may owe you millions and millions of dollars for the, your son, but at the same time, you could be on that board of advisors and use your son's life as a blessing to other people's lives. You could turn that pain into a blessing. It may hurt, it may take some time, but you can always turn pain into a blessing for somebody else. She can honor her son's death at the same time, be on the advisory board of the police department in her community. She can become a councilwoman in her community. 
She can become a senator. She can become an assembly person. She can become a leader of her community and use her pain for a purpose, which is what a lot of people don't do. They used to do that in the 80s and the 90s, but a lot of people don't do. All they want is the money. But you've got to use that pain for a purpose. We need that black dollar, but we got to use that black dollar for a purpose. Black people have a lot, a lot of interest in the United States economy. I'm not talking about we have a lot of, uh, of interest in, in sports. Of course, black people make up 80% of athlete, athletes around the United States, of NBA, of NFL, of hockey, of golf. Black people make up 70 to 80% of all the athletes in, in the United States. And you know how the, the economy right now has been in depression because there's no sports on TV. Okay? So what happens when the, when, when the black dollar, right now, the economy is going down, businesses are closing down. We need that black dollar. We need that black dollar. So you don't like the mayor in your neighborhood? Okay, I don't like the mayor. I'm going to run for city council. I'm going to run for mayor. I'm going to run for office and use my son's life as a blessing to other people. I'm going to fight for justice against other mothers who have been 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 uh, hostilized against other people, other hate groups. You have to use your voice, okay? You have to use your voice because they have power. At the same time, you have power. These hate groups have power. You have power. So who has more power? Are you going to give them more power? Are you going to take the power and use it for yourself? And it's not about Black power. It's about power in the community. It's about community power. It's about Latino and Black power for everybody. It's about community power, not about a presidential power that we have already lost. We've lost people's lives to a virus. We lost people's lives to, to police brutality. We've lost people's lives to a stupid, stupid man in the White House, who I have to say is still commander in chief. Yeah, we could cry about it and sue the police department, or we could come together, fire the whole police department and make up our own police department in the community and hire who we want to hire and fire who we want to fire. Yes, we as a community have that power. White, Black, Latino, Asian, Jewish, whatever you are, Muslim, whatever you are, you have that power. If you don't like the, the people in your community, if you don't like the police people in your community, you have a right to come together as a group, come together as a group and, and have their job. I want your job. You're not doing your job right. I want your job. And send them on their way. And you become a police officer and you help improve your community. Get that chicken out of here and change your community. Be the change you want to see. Yes, a mom died. Yes, it's all over the press. That mother can do something with that. Elections are going on right now. She can use her son's life as a blessing and run for office. and use her son's life as a campaign slogan saying if it happened to me it happened to you and we can improve our community and people will back her up you are never alone that's why we need to put pressure on people okay to report what is going on to report what is happening and yes it's ugly it is very ugly crying on on on, on national tv being bald headed, being bald headed is ugly. Yeah, it's ugly. You're black, you're old, you're poor, it's ugly. Yeah, they'll probably make you look ugly. Yeah, well, you can look ugly one day and you can look hot and gorgeous the next. And it don't have nothing to do with money. All you need is some people to help you out. Yeah, he died from police brutality. Yeah, he died. Police rage challenge after killing. Yeah, the FDR, and, and it happened in Kentucky. Talk about that police, that police officer that was shot in her own home. By police officers.
It is really sad. But we need that black dollar. We need that black dollar. New Orleans still hasn't changed. New Orleans is still very dope poor. We still need that black dollar to come into New Orleans. We need that black dollar. A lot of companies are closing down Hertz, car rental, JC Penney, the fashion industry, Italy. Still, still at the same time, we need that black dollar. We need that black dollar. Yeah, I know you are white people, but you know what? The black dollar does have influence. We need that black dollar to pour back into our economy. What's going on right now? People, people are losing faith. We need that black dollar. They need us and we need them. All these businesses are closed down. You know how many black businesses come back into and you know how powerful black businesses, not just Tyler Perry. I mean, Tyler Perry is just one man, but you see what he does when he comes into community. Does he help improve his community? Not just investments, but really when Tyler Perry comes into Atlanta, does has Tyler Perry helped improve Atlanta? I'm sure he has helped improve Atlanta, but really, when he comes into a community, when he helps build up a community, when he moves his big studio, when he does all his productions, wherever he goes, does he help change his community? Has Tyler Perry changed the community where his office is, where his studios reside? Has he helped change the city of Atlanta? You damn right he has. T.D. Jakes, when T.D. Jakes built that mega million black church in South Dallas on a hill, and he took away the lease from, from um, from that white church and that white church had a had a closed down saddleback saddleback house in dallas i don't think it's called saddle saddle saddleback house saddleback church when td jakes built that mega million dollar church he built the first church and he built another church on top of that you damn right it bought black it it brought money into the dallas economy into the city of Dallas. Yeah, he had a hustle. Yeah, he had to do this, this, and that, and that to get it. But he brought back money and economic profit to the city of Dallas. Now, I'm not saying my relationship between me and TD Jakes is, is okay and easy. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is these black men have brought back money and profit not only for the black community as a whole, but they brought back money into the cities where they live. They just didn't bring, just didn't take the money in the city, take the take the tickets, take the residentials from the cities and leave. And left the cities empty and bare. They brought back money for the for the community to be continually poured into the community. So Tyler Perry at his studio help change, change the city of Atlanta. A lot of people are like, oh, Atlanta's about here. No, Atlanta's not just about here. Atlanta is a major, major movie mecca studio. 
just like Los Angeles, Atlanta. You got Bravo TV in Atlanta. You got VH1 in Atlanta. You got so many big, big media people in Atlanta. And that's just because of, of continual, continual investment by the community into the cities that it helped build. So we can't just all of a sudden move to Atlanta. Oh, you need to move to Atlanta? No, we don't need to just move to Atlanta. We need to invest back in our community. Wherever you live, you can make that the new Atlanta. You can make that the new Dallas. You can make that the new Vegas. Wherever you live. You can make your own TV studio, your own record studio, and your own community and bring back money into your own community like they did in New York in the 90s. Biggie and Tupac. Biggie had a studio in New York and it brought back so much money and popularity on the streets of New York City. It's ridiculous. It brought back money into the community. Mac 10, all those rappers, Heavy D, all those rappers from the 80s and the 90s, it brought back so much money into the Black community and the Black community was able to own their own stuff, own their own profits. But we don't own anything anymore. And when the economy happens, what do we do? We move. We move to where the other black people are at. And then where the other black people are at, they're already settled down. And these black people that are moving pretty much come in and ghetto fight and trash up the whole neighborhood and the community. That the, that the people that were already living there are well established. They have established jobs, doctors and lawyers. And we come into their community with no kind of job potential working temporary jobs, having five kids, everybody's on welfare, okay? Everybody is on, on uh, Section 8, and we expect Section 8 to take care of a five, six, seven bedroom house and live on Section 8 for five, 10 years, and therefore we made it up in the community just because we got a five bedroom house. That's not how it works. You can't have a five bedroom house in any place in the United States and expect not to have a job to back up that five bedroom house and expect to live off a check to take care of that income. You cannot do that because it, that house is backed up by taxes and a house is backed up by economic, uh, you have assets. You have to have an asset when you have a house. So yes, yeah, Section 8 may help cover it, but you still need an asset to back up the value of that house. And when you have people that are continually moved into neighborhoods on a government check, the whole, gov the whole community turns into everybody is backed up by the government. Everybody lives off a government check. So there's no taxes pouring back into the neighborhoods, onto the neighborhood block. There's no taxes. There is no local business taxes pouring back into the community. So everybody's living off the same check. Therefore, the, the value of the house, of the real estate and the community goes down because there's no local, local businesses, local community profit to pour back into the community. Okay? So you have brand new condos and brand new houses. You have brand new apartment buildings. But these brand new apartment buildings, everybody's on Section 8. So no one has a job to, to pour back taxes into the communities and to the cities. If you get a check from the government, that means you don't owe the government taxes. See how that works? See how that works? If you get a check from the government, that means that that check is not taxed. Okay, that check is not taxed. The government doesn't check these such these social uh, these uh, section eight or social security checks. It's not taxed. They may take off for insurance purposes, insurance subsidies. They may take off for insurances, but most of all government checks that people get from welfare or from or from a social security disability, they are not taxed. So it is tax free money that you get from the government. You can use whatever you do. You can do whatever you want, which I have too as well. And when people do not do not work and do not contribute back into the community and do not buy into the community, you're taking away the value of the community. You're taking away the profit that the city needs in order to continue to survive. The city has taxes. It taxes people for a reason. It has a retail tax. It has a sales tax. It has an income tax. And if people are not buying products and buying services in the community, the community cannot survive. The city governments cannot survive because they are not getting the taxes and the profit from those businesses. 
So you may have a huge United States government in Washington, D.C. pour back into a, a trillion dollar stimulus plan, but that, truly, that stimulus plan is tax-free money. You're giving every single family in the United States a $2,000 tax-free check. What am I talking about? What am I talking about? I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what time. The economy is going down because we are not getting our taxes. We are not pouring back into our communities. We are not building businesses in our communities and we are not, they are not taxing people like they should be. Oh my God, oh my God, what are you talking about? You know what you're talking about. I don't want taxes. I don't want higher taxes. You need taxes for a reason. Believe you me, because when this when the stimulus package passed, this three trillion dollar stimulus package passed, they are going to raise taxes. They are going to raise taxes on the food you buy. They're going to inflate the food, the food prices. They are going to tax every single body some way, somehow. That two dollar hamburger from McDonald's is going to turn into a five dollar hamburger from McDonald's. The prices are going to be inflated because the government has to give back the money that it gave to the people. The people are not getting are not, are not putting out taxes like they used to. And I need to file my taxes. <laughs> the people are not pouring back in taxes. What am I talking about? What am I talking about? The government is not getting back the money that it is owed. Are you seriously have, telling me that we have a president that is not saying anything about taxes? Are you telling the black community that we don't have to pay our taxes just because we have somebody get shot? Just because we have police brutality in our community? We don't have to do anything. All we have to do is just sit back and collect a check. Oh, my son died. I get a $5 million uh, uh, package plan. Oh my, oh, come, oh, my community died. Oh, my restaurant shut down shut down. Oh, my business is foreclosing on. I need a check from the government. And I don't have to pay the government back. That's not how it works. You still need to pay back the money that you loaned out to. You have to pay back the money that you loaned out to. You have to get clientele, you have to get business. You may, you may work for a company, okay? You may work for a company. And when you get that check from the company, that company is going to tax you on that check. So if a company puts taxes on the check when you work for them, how can you not expect the government to put taxes on a free check? I got a $2,000 check from the government from the civil package. I am happy. Me and my family are okay. We get a section, we get a two, three thousand dollars section eight check every single month to help take care of my mortgage, of my house bill, of my house note, of my light bill. The government pays for it. And I don't have to do anything but sit back and watch TV in my SRR in my house, in my five-bedroom house. Because I get section eight and I'm okay. And I don't have to work because I get Section 8 and I get a Social Security check. That's not how it works. And whoever told the Black community to apply, all apply for Section 8, whoever did that, whoever implemented that plan into our Black community is wrong, okay? The Black community was made to work and to work and to invest and to be business owners. We are a community where we are meant to be our own business owners. We are not meant only to rely on a government check. And yes, Ms. Ahmad is probably going to get a $2 million, $3 million, $10 a million check from the police department that shot her son. She probably is right. But she needs to use that check for a reason. And she can do whatever she wants with that check. That's fine. Her son died. She needs to let him rest in peace. God, God rest his soul. And the lawyers are going to get paid. Yeah. But you can't just sit back and relax and not do anything and just move to take a nice vacation and not do anything about it. Oh, I get a check from the government. Let me take a vacation. That's not how it works. Oh, I get a social security check. Oh, I get S. Oh, I get I get section eight. I got a five-room house and six kids. And I get a child support check. 
Are you working? Are you going to school? What's the future for your family? Are they safe? Are they protected? Are they in a safe neighborhood? Is the community clean? Are they working? Are they going to school? Do they have their own businesses? Do they have jobs? Because you can't expect for the government to take care of you all of your life. Because when the government fails, we all fail. And we can't just rely on the government to take care of us. We have to come together as a community, figure out what our community needs, okay? What do we need as a community? And ask every single person in our community, go to door to door to door, house to house to house, and ask them, what do you need? What do you need help with? Because if the government right now is eventually bound to fail. And we are eventually bound to go to a war. Because the economy right now is not doing anything. So the United States has to declare war in order to get resources from another country. We probably don't have to go to war with China because we need that oil, we, or we need our Iran. We need their resources. They put this virus on us, so we need it to, to get back at them. At the same time, declare war over them so that we can have power over as like, as three billion people. We need to declare war against China to declare that we have power and authority over the, the Republic of China. And when the United States wins a war against China, that means the United States is a control of China and therefore the United States controls the world. I may be completely, uh, completely oblivious, but it's very simple. Politics is very simple. It's all about money. And if the government is your only way to make money, something is wrong with that. If a check from the government is your only, only income of how to make money, something is wrong with that. If you live your whole life based on a check from SSI or from the Department of Labor, something is wrong with that so from the Department of Health and Human Services. You live your whole life fix on what their expectations of you and what their limitations of you. And if you pass their limitations of you, that means they will sue you and give back the money that they gave to you. Just like the Social Security office, Social Security tried to sue me for $100,000. So I had to get back on that check. I'm not saying I was wrong. I'm not saying they were right. But you do what you have to do in order to survive. At the same time, though, I am volunteering. I am taking classes. I am being involved in the community. I am still going to counseling. I'm still going to therapy. I'm still on my medication. I'm still being involved in my community. I'm still going to get my master's degree. I'm still going to be involved in politics. I'm still going to be going to hospitals. I'm still going to be volunteering. I'm still going to be working part time to get myself back up on my feet and get myself off and declare independence for myself, financial independence and security independence as well. So that when I retire, I can have a 401k to back me up as well as residuals from my jobs that I have worked at and my small business just like my father did. It took him time to build that business. All businesses take time. It took Mark Zuckerberg and, and Steve Jobs times and Michael, da and Michael Dale and Bill Gates time to build their businesses, which are billion, billion, billion dollar businesses. And Johnson and Johnson. So that one day you can have somebody who looks at your business as an investor to come into your investor and you can still keep that business or you can sell it off for millions and millions of dollars. And live off of that and build another business on top of that. So we as a black community cannot forget somebody's death. At the same time, we have to say, this person died for a reason. This person's death is not in vain. And so, and so, okay, you know what? This person's death is not in vain. At the same time, give us back the community, give us back power in the community and let us run for office. Let us do what we have to do in order to declare leadership and take back the government into our hands and declare independence from the government. Let the government do what it needs to do. Let the, let the government make laws, let the government 
uh, can uh, make peace in our society because that's, that's what police officers are for. They're here to secure the peace. They're here to secure the peace. But you have some, some officers, some cops that take that out of control, as well as private, private citizens who take the law into their own hands and can back it up by our current administration and office and get away with it. You mean I'm a private citizen, I'm a white, I'm a black private citizen, and I can shoot somebody because the law says I have the right to defend myself, me and my son? And we don't have to go to jail for it, whether we're white or black, you damn right, they can get away with that. And they could be a white or they could be a black. It don't matter. Because they are involved in groups and political groups that can back them up. And what I say, what I mean, what I say is whether they're black or they're white, these people are involved in groups. They are involved in groups. They are involved in government organizations who have interest in these in the activities that these people do. You have lobbyist groups that have interest in government. And you say, oh, our friend, he did this. Oh, don't worry about that. We'll pay them off. We'll back them up. These groups have political interests. And so we as a black community have to come together and say, you know what, as a black community, we have the same political interests as these people have. We have more political interests and you cannot get away with this crime. You cannot get away with this. We have interests just as well as you do. You have an organization and we have an organization. So you cannot get away with this. It doesn't matter if you're white, you're black, you're Muslim, you're Jewish. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. You cannot get away with this. And it doesn't matter whatever, whoever has interest in what you did or who you are as a person. Whatever group or organization you are a part of, you cannot get away with this. And we will come together as a people and as a group and form our own organization and take you and your family to jail. And we don't, come, we don't care what kind of group or political activist group you are a part of. Really? Yeah, it's like that. But a lot of people are by themselves and alone and afraid and scared, just like me, afraid to sleep at night. Don't even have a place to sleep. Don't even have a bed to sleep in. And running for their life from political, political activist groups. And wherever you go, people, white, black, Muslim, Latino, have the same interest in the group that it is against you. So that mother may have died, and if she decides she doesn't want to be involved in her community, and she moves somewhere else, she moves to a different city across the United States. And she has her little check from the police department, her $5 million check, and she's going to move somewhere else across the United States and live off of that $5 million severance package check. Somebody from that political activist group is going to come to where she has moved to and make sure that she does not live a happy life. So most of the time, the families that get these checks, these death, death packages, compensation packages, most of the check is spent just on security and paying off lawyers. So that family really may only have 20 or maybe even 30, 15% of that check left. So she gets a $5 million check for the death of her son and she has to spend it on the rest of her life for personal security. For people to be at her door guarding her life.
oh yeah she may have family yeah she may have family okay what is her her family's gonna take care of her that's not her that's not how it works because what's usually when something hits nationwide national tv your whole entire family and everybody that is connected to you their life is in danger when it hits national tv So some remembers the face of the boy that died. And it may not be a private citizen, it may be another cop in the community that you move to that knows that you are the mother or the father of, the, of your dead son and they saw your face on, on national television and they will make the rest of your life a living hell because you did not stay in your place. But we have power. We have a voice as a community. We don't have to let our cities like Boston, the home of Harvard University. And who went to Harvard University? Who graduated from Harvard University? Barack Obama, President of Barack Obama. President Barack H. Hussein Obama. We cannot let our cities go to waste. They need us just as much as we need them. They need our black dollar just as much as we need their social services. They need us, we need them. We can't just declare, just have a strike, the black Charlemagne. We can't do that, Charlemagne, from the Breakfast Club. We can't do that. Charlemagne, they need our black dollar. They need our black dollar, Charlemagne. The black dollar is necessary for the United States economy. They need our black dollar. And we don't have to we don't have to let this keep happening. We can have our own brothers and our own sisters run for office, run for police chief of the department, have the have that police chief fired and have somebody else come into the community and take over and start hiring and firing who we want in our community and who we want to be a part of, whether they're white, black, Latino, Muslim. Jewish, whoever we need in our community, we need to put them in our community to protect us. And come together. They need our black dollar. They need our black dollar. The United States cannot function without the black dollar. We cannot continue to keep taking money and taking money from Washington DC and let Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer keep bailing us out. We can't do that. They need our scientific input and they need our money. The black dollar is necessary. We cannot live in Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick took a stand and look what he did with the world. Look what kind of change Colin Kaepernick made just by taking, just by sitting down. And look how many people came together with him. And you know, at the current administration office, President Trump does not like Colin Kaepernick. My guy, number seven, San Francisco 49ers. No. He don't. You realize how much power you have and authority you have when all you have to do is just to stand and kneel. You don't need to scream. You don't need to yell, forgive me. You need to go right in the streets, forgive me. Forgive me, forgive me.
they need our black dollar. And how can you have a sporting event and no people to watch the sporting event? No fans in the audience. Ridiculous. And no nurses at the stadiums to monitor people and to watch people. Okay, okay, so we're gonna cancel all sporting events and not have medical personnel inside these, inside these sporting events to monitor people. So you're gonna cancel all sporting events, multi-million dollar revenue to come to the city and not have any kind of medical personnel in there to monitor and to screen people against this virus. And not have people wear, wear a mask are not limit the quantity of people that come to the stadiums and break it up into stages. So you just want to cancel everything completely. You have a sporting event, you have medical per per uh, personnel. You have a large office building, you need medical personnel. You need to hire nurses, you need to hire doctors, and the government needs to start training people. You can't expect the government to dish out money and then also dish out education, education incentives. So we're going to give our citizens $2,000 and not give them a free, a free ride to school for job improvement? Why don't you make that, why don't you make half that check a free, free four-week class, CNA class, or a four free week uh a, a free a free course on how to become a uh, diagnostic technician or how to become a screener. You get the check, you take a class. That's how it works. You get a 2000 check from the government, you need to give back to the government. You need to become a part of your community. Because that's the way we need to function. The government needs educational packages like that. It needs stimulus programs like that. You just can't dish out money to the people and expect them to sit on their butts all day and not do anything about it. And expect, to, expect people to, to receive a check and not be a skilled and trained workforce. So we're going to continue to give people and banks trillions and trillions of dollars and not train them on how to do anything, any kind of trade or any kind of skill. We're gonna give you a $2,000 check, a $10,000 check and not train you on any, and you're not gonna go to school or do anything with that 10,000 or that $2,000 check. Just sit on your butt and buy some video games and buy some food. You're not gonna go to school. You're not gonna do anything. You're not gonna volunteer in your community. You're not gonna do some kind of construction job in your community. You're not gonna build up your community. FDR called it the public works project. And that's what helped got the economy going back again against the Great Depression. FDR has so many public works programs, it is ridiculous, that still continue to, to live today. We need back those public works programs. But the, but Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and Mitch McConnell, all of them are just dishing out trillions and trillions of dollars to the United States economy and expecting that these businesses will open back up again. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. People will sit on their books and they will collect that check and do nothing with it. Just go to sleep and collect the check. But you have to back, open back up schools again, open up back up trade schools, training academies to train people on the job training schools, on the job training. United States government hiring nurses on the job training provider. United States government hiring construction technicians, hiring forklift operators on the job training required, on the job training uh, uh, required, uh, uh, we'll take care of. Provided. 
the United States government hiring doctors will provide free tuition assistance. You get a check, you go to school, you train, and you do so much and you give back to the government. That's how it should work. That's how it should work. But people don't do that anymore. It's such it's such a, a late lazy, lazy generation. Social media all day, and you don't do nothing with that social media except have 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 video games about people gossiping and passing back life and just you have all these rich people and tea people what are these rich people doing with their lives they're just doing nothing with their lives are these rich people on tv vh1 and tv bet are these people doing anything in the community do you see them going out to the community with uh, uh real housewives of atlanta real housewives of la even American Idol, do you see these people actually going back into the communities and pouring money back into the community? I'm sure you have Fantasia did that. Kelly Clarkson did that. Yes, yeah, she did. But it needs to be more and more involvement like that into the communities. You win a prize, you give back to the community. You come back home to us and pour back into us. Or wherever you're living. That's how it should work. And yeah, there are bad cops. There are bad cops everywhere. There are bad cops, there are bad police, there are bad military people, there are bad doctors and nurses. There are people doing bad things in every single profession. But you have the choice to change your life and choice to deal with how you react to situations. You always have a choice. You can use it for your bad or you can turn around and use it for your good. I can go shop. People are like, oh, she's manic. Oh, she's crazy. Oh, she needs a man to go shopping. She needs somebody to help her go shopping. No, I don't. I can do what I want to do. I'm involved in community. I'm doing what I want to do. And yeah, most of the things I do online, but I'm doing it for a reason online. And I don't have a lot of views. I don't have a lot of friends. But you know what? Sometimes less is more. Because the more people that reach out to it, and, and those, and those few people have more power, I could do way much more than them with that. If I have if I have 10 views and all those people are 10 community leaders, 10 United States representatives, that's all I need. That's all I need. And then those 10 people can reach out to their communities and their citizens. And you can take those two, one person from one view and turn it into 500 views. And they can actually share that with their community and their neighborhoods. Hi, Roberta. Hi, Auntie. All right. So we have we are the black dollar. We have control. The black dollar has control. The black dollar always have control. Always have control. We are the black dollar and we always have control. Charlemagne, they need us like we need them. The black dollar has so much power, it is ridiculous. You see a white man in the house, but he needs that black dollar. Oh yes, he does. He does need that black dollar, Charlemagne. From the Breakfast Club. He may be a white man, but he needs that black dollar. All right, guys, this is LaQueen coming back, coming live from Boston, Massachusetts. Keep me your thoughts and prayers. I got a lot to do. I got a lot to do. And I need some help. I keep I keep losing personal assistance. I keep losing people to help me. It is ridiculous. But they need our black dollar. They need us just as much as we need them. 
So that son's, that Ahmad's life was not in vain. That police officer that got shot by other police officers, the female, the young lady, her life was not in vain. You can always turn pain into They need our black dollar. They need us, just like we need them. All right, I love you guys. Bye.